and I'll present the topic on leveraging open source software to incorporate open assignment in course. And just a note, my presentation notes are all available at wiki.ubc.ca slash fossi, and they're all Creative Commons licensed. So in this session, we'll mainly go over basics on what is an open assignment, use cases of open assignments in MediaWiki, WordPress, and H5P, and outcomes of open assignment, and as well as understanding privacy and risk when incorporating the open practice in class. So uh, why open assignment? And I'm going to talk a bit about pedagogy of open assignment. And when we talk about open assignment, we begin with uh, the student as a producer model, which is a term coined by Mike Neely, who is the Dean of Teaching Learning Center at University of Lincoln. Uh, in a traditional classroom, students will listen to the instructor's lecture and consume the knowledge from the expert. So in this setting, students' role is a bit more passive and act more like a consumer of knowledge. Uh, in Neely's model, the students as a producer model, students will become part of the knowledge creators. An example of this knowledge creation process is to create videos or like create case studies or maybe even like contribute it to a textbook. And expertise like an instructor will provide and support the process of knowledge creation. So in this case, the students become a producer of knowledge and knowledge creators. So adapting Neely's model, uh, we want students to be a knowledge creators and we ask students to create a work for the assignment. But in traditional assignments, students will submit their assignment to instructors through learning management system. And in the closed environment of learning management system, only classmate and instructors and TA will be able to read it. So after being graded, the assignment will not really produce any additional value beyond the classroom. Uh, because like when you submit the assignment, like after the course is done, uh, most likely that uh, assignment will disappear in the space unless the students republish it elsewhere. So this phenomenon is described as disposable assignment according to David Wiley, who is one of the early scholars who have incorporated the or a concept of open source and free software to education context. So David Wiley suggested an assignment called renewable assignment, where the student's work will add more value publishing student work in the internet through blogs, or contributing to open textbook, or contributing to Wikipedia article, and etc. And in this case, the work that students have created will reach the wider audience, will have permanent spaces, and not only instructors and students will see, but also to scholars and students from other university. So based on Wiley's concept of renewable assignment, there are the four parts tests to consider when designing an open assignment. So are students asked to create new artifacts or revise or remix existing open educational resources? Does the new artifact have value beyond supporting the learning of its author? So let's say like if you produce an assignment, so like if the students produce an assignment, like does it only benefit the course that the students are in? Or like does it like uh, promote value to like people uh, who are reading outside of the classroom? And also are students invited to publicly share the new artifacts or revise or remix OER? And are students invited to openly license the new artifacts or revise or remix or uh, OER. And the important part to consider is the term invited. So students have the total agency and the choice to whether or not they want to share their work publicly or whether or not they want to share and licensing on it. So in order to support open pedagogy practices, open source tools are an excellent tool. So with open source tool, it is a bit more sustainable in the long run. If there's a certain demand that we need to fulfill by faculty, we have the flexibility to develop plugins or extension of the tools, or even reuse the existing plugin. And with open source tools, we are less reliant on vendors who may charge very high amount of uh, money for extra customization work. Uh, so my university, University of British Columbia, provides support for a variety of open source tools, including MediaWiki, WordPress, H5P, Jupyter Hub, and uh, WebWork. Our developers uh, build customization to the open source tools or plugins or extensions so that we can add features that are useful for users, which are faculty, students, and staff. And we also use plugins that are developed by the community, and our developers make a contribution to improve the plugin. And most of the plugins, extensions, and contributions are shared through the GitHub repo, uh, including customization and plugins. And the GitHub uh, repo can be accessed through github.com slash UBC. And in this session, we will focus uh, purely on MediaWiki, WordPress, and H5P. So I'm just going to introduce the first tools that we uh, use uh, in the university, which is MediaWiki. So MediaWiki is the same technology that is used in uh, 
uh, as Wikipedia and, U and UBC, we run MediaWiki on Edu Cloud Server, which is both managed by UBC and BCNet. And we call our instance of MediaWiki UBC Wiki. And our instance of MediaWiki has been running since 2006, and we have more than 10,000 pages. And we have made it so that it is only editable by campus-wide login, but uh, viewable by anyone who has access to the internet. So anyone with the campus-wide login, which is uh, student, faculty, and staff, can edit the page in the media wiki without restriction. So there's less administrative barriers on adding and contributors. We have also designed it so that it's more like a shared space for the UBC community, so that the guidelines are more flexible compared to Wikipedia. So instructors uh, use Wiki as a place to host courses, documentations, and students even use it to list uh, coffee shops on campus. And we also have multiple extensions that's used in the Wiki, uh, sorry, media Wiki community, including dynamic page list plugins and uh, widgets plugin. And I also want to show example of how instructors use the course. So the course, uh, first course that I want to introduce is FNH 200 courses. Uh, which is a course developed by Judy Chen. So the really unique thing about course is everything on this wiki is actually publicly available and even Creative Commons license. So if you click on, let's say, Lesson 2, sorry, the internet can be slow, but so uh, you can see the whole course content uh, like on the wiki here. And then like in addition, there's also a student's assignment on the wiki space. So if I go to the 2023 team assignment, uh, like I can access students' work and students have a permanent uh, space to host their assignment. So uh, the motivation behind this course page was back then Judy used to ask students to create poster for the assignment. However, she noticed that students don't really look back or use the poster after the assignment. So she came up with an idea to contribute the project to the online space so that all the effort that students put will not be wasted. So this goes back to the idea of non-disposable assignment, uh, which was discussed by David Wiley. And there's also another project that I want to show. So another project that I want to showcase uh, is a CON 370, which is taught by multiple instructors. And in this uh, course, students are asked to write an open case study for the project on the wiki. And students were given options to release their work as a Creative Commons license or open license so that we can showcase on uh, open case study website, which is actually a WordPress uh, site here. So I'm going to show the open case study website here. So this is the open case study website. So not only uh, forestry is the course that's uh, used in the open case study website, there are actually also other courses that are using this site. So if I go into one of the example, so these are actually all embedded in the wiki page. And it uses a plugin called Wiki Embedded Plugin, which is developed by UBC developers and is also available on the UBC GitHub. So if I click on this one, uh, you can see that actually the students' work are embedded to on the media wiki. And this is really nice because the open case study itself is administrated by limited amount of the users. But then for the UBC wiki, like students can just edit the work. So let's say uh, if the students want to make an edit, like they can just edit it right off at the wiki. So that, that's really nice thing because the students have the full ownership to it. So now that I have introduced two examples, I'm going to rapidly move on to the another technology, which is the WordPress. So WordPress is a tool that is used to create blogs and website. And in UBC, we have two main instances, which is uh, UBC blogs, which is uh, used to create a portfolio site or like course resources, as well as UBC CMS, which is uh, mainly used for departmental website. And it has been running since 2008, and it has over 12 million pages views per year. And then like it's also using a WordPress multi-site technology and also hosted using the Azure Cloud services. So I'm just going to give a few examples of the WordPress projects. One is the video game law courses. So this is the video game law courses. Uh, it's a course uh, created by law instructor John Fistinger. So the course itself is open. It has a Creative Commons license in it, so people can reuse and uh, remix the work. And uh, you can see the student contribution here. And what I like is if I go to the About Community Participate, uh, you can see that like the course encouraged like people outside from this course to participate uh, to the discussion. So not only the student in the course will be participating in the course, but then like, stu like other students or like 
uh, law practitioners who is interested in contributing the community can participate in the course. So like it's a really nice things that the instructor did. And the other thing that I want to showcase is there's also a new plugin called Socrates uh, plugin. And then where like it asks Socrates type of questions so that it will stimulate deeper thinking by employing Socratic methods. So this is the book by Richard Tate, who is our developer at Center for Teaching, Learning and Technology. And the plugins is uh, available on the GitHub. And there's also another course that I want to introduce, uh, which is the Spanish 312 courses. So this is another WordPress-based site, which is created by John Beasley Murray, uh, who has also worked on a number of wonderful Wikipedia projects. So all of the course material are publicly available. It's CC license. And what I like is the syndication feature with the student blog. So if you go on the blog here, so you can see there's a blog feed in one place. But then if I click on one of the blog posts, sorry, not this one, um, you can see that you can access the student's blogs. This is really nice because the students have the ownership of their own blog, but there's actually one place that you can see like a list of the student's blog in one place. So this is a really nice uh, uh, feature that showcases the, co the connectivism in WordPress. So I'm just going to go back to the slides here. So like the last example that I want to show is H5P. So H5P is a tool that's created, uh, tool used to create an HTML5-based interactive objects. So it gives you an ability to create ungraded quizzes, interact videos, and even things like a map. And this is really nice like tools that I like to use because it doesn't really require coding skill to create a complex HTML5 project. And it has also ability to embed the content to multiple places. So it is often used as a companion tool to add interactive and interactivity to WordPress or MediaWiki resources. And what I also really like is it has the ability to reuse and download the content, which I find it very useful because it makes it really easy to remix and reuse the content. And in UBC, we are using H5P plugin on single WordPress uh, installation. So there's actually two projects that I want to showcase. Uh, one is called Learning Commons website. So uh, Learning Commons website, it's actually more of an open education resources website rather than a course website. So the whole site is a Creative Commons license. It is uh, students as, using student as producer models. So all of the contents are developed by undergraduate students. And then like, but this showcases a good example of uh, H5P integration with WordPress. So you can see that like this is just an embedding YouTube video. But then on the reflect, there's a multiple choice uh, quiz that's uh, developed. And also there's another H5P tools that's used. And this, and I'm actually involved in this project. And what I really like is it doesn't require any coding skill. So like we hire students from like different backgrounds from such as like arts or like different discipline. And then like, it doesn't really require like a long training time to like, uh, to make H5P objects. And then like, it really like loosens the barrier. And there's also another uh, page that I want to showcase, which is the common lords, uh, Toads Wiki. So this is an ongoing project that is led by Samuel uh, Breswick, and it's also students produce resources for common law. And it is designed to be a companion textbook of the Toast Law Open Textbook. So let's say if I go into one of the examples here. So there's an embedded uh, pieces here. So let me go to the, another example with the H5P. So there's an embedded radio. Yeah, so that you can see that the quiz is embedded in the uh, end of the pages. And what is really nice about it is like, uh, it actually adds a lot of interactivity uh, in the pages. And this is a really great example that showcases it. So now going back. So now going back to the slides. So I want to discuss about the outcome of these projects. So as a result of these projects, the quality of work students went up really significantly. And this is partly be, uh, due to because the work is not only being seen by professor and classmate, but also to anyone who has internet connection. And in addition, students learn about open culture and digital literacy. And they will gain knowledge on what it means to publish their work online and gain uh, understanding on open license. And the student work will contribute to public knowledge, which can be easily 
uh, we publish and we mix to other places. And I once actually created a diagram for my coursework and published on a CC license. And because it was CC license, I was able to reuse it for my work and other institutions also reuse and remix my work. So I felt really proud of it. And from the administrator side, working with open software is such a game changer. And with open source software, it allows us to be flexible with plugins and customization according to faculty needs. For example, the media wiki templates can easily be developed, or we can import template from the media wiki community. And this is really helpful for us because if this was a proprietary tool, like I probably would get charged premium by the vendors for customization. And if I want to do further customization, I have to go through the vendor. And then there's also increased interaction with local and global community. So I will give one example in the next slide. So a student published the research paper on Flathead Valley through MediaWiki and Open Case Study website, which I just showed. And a researcher from different institutions found the student's work and was very interested in the topic. So the researcher reached out with the student for a radio interview. So this interaction would not have been happened if the assignment was published within the traditional learning management system. So it gave this new connection from the assignment by publishing in the really open space. But of course, like we did talk about a glorious side of, challenge, uh, of open education, but of course, there's a challenges and consideration. Uh, so this is my favorite quote about open pedagogy by Rajiv, and it talks about how open pedagogy always comes with risk. So with open pedagogy, students will be exposed to sharing unpolished ideas and practices, and that can lead to the judgment. And there's a vulnerability component in risk, and the risks are not really equal. So risk can be higher for women and scholars of colors. So what I find really important with open assignment is it is important to inform students beforehand that they are submitting their assignment in an open online space where anyone with the internet connection can access the material. And this can be really different uh, depending on the subject of the assignment and student background. So it is very also important for students to have choice of not publishing the assignment to the public. So having an alternative assignments such as publishing the assignment in learning management system instead will be actually a good alternative. So it is also important to not require students to post any personal information such as student number and first and last name as well unless students are comfortable sharing their first name and last name. And you can also give students the option to use a pseudonym which is actually used in some courses. And there are also consideration on copyright. Uh, fair use in open spaces can be a bit tricky, so it is best to use openly licensed and creative commons images. Luckily, Medium Wiki and WordPress both have integration in the visual editor that allows to embed open license image in easily. So it lessens the hurdle of finding open license images. So all of the resources from the presentation can be accessed through this link, wiki.ubc.ca slash fossey. And if you have uh, any question, you can also contact through this email address. And again, thank you so much for joining me today at the event today. And do you have any questions? And here's our the reference. So yeah, thank you, by the way. Uh, the, yeah, so this the system was implemented for college. Uh, how easy do you think it would be to implement it for other types of school, like high school or junior high? Yeah, actually, that's a really good question. So I wasn't really involved in the whole installation process, but then like there's actually already like existing like we are sources available on the GitHub. So like uh, you're more than welcome to like reach out to like us, and then like we can help provide like guidance. Like we couldn't do like full support, but then we can just provide the guidance to like other institutions who is in interested in the installation. Yeah. It on. Uh, so I have a question. Um, can you talk a little bit about what kind of interaction and, and partnership or activities the open educational resources folks have with the open source software development mm. folks? Like, do they work together? Do they work independently and come together at certain points? Do they are they the same people? What's that relationship like? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. So like I think like a lot of open education folks are actually inspired by open source community because the open source community was invented first before the open education resources. 
So the slide that I think I mentioned, like David Wiley is actually, like his all the open education pedagogy is inspired by open source community. And I also think that like, they are both like has to be connected somehow, because like if I, if you use like proprietary tool, then like, let's say like, if you want to share the data, like usually the people have to purchase that software to like, uh, just like share the data. So that's really like, doesn't go well with the all the like, philosophy of open education. So like when we like create like open education resources, we make sure that we are using like open software or anything that's accessible and is free. And what's it like specifically at UBC where you're working? Like what's your relationship like when you start up a project? Do you do you say, hey, we want to do a, a course that's gonna be an open pedagogy, an open course, or it's going to have open, you know, learning objects or whatever, and we want to use our use case is this, so therefore that actual relation, the working relationship at UBC. Yeah, that's a good question. So I work at the Center for Teaching and Learning Technology, so most of the requests come from actually faculty. So it's more like request basis, and they say it's like, oh, I'm interested in op uh, making my material open education. So like what are the tools I can use? What are the copyright consideration? And it's actually, and one most important thing is whether the topic they're talking is also like appropriate for open education. Because not everything needs to be open education. Sometimes it's better not to be in public. Sometimes it's better to be public. Anyone else want to ask a question? Do you have a... What is ASPO? Uh, and the, an open source program office. So you have a lot of open initiatives happening with BC campus and UBC. Yeah. What's that? So yeah, it's, so, but you don't have a formal uh, OSPO, right? I think like we have like, uh, or like we are embedded like Center for Teaching and Technology and we have like an open education resource strategist uh, and I think in the UBC library, there's also uh, people who specialize in open source, but then they are mostly embedded in the department, so we don't really have like an open source department. But then our IT team actually like supports like some of the open source tools. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you.